Time for a talk about one of the aspects of 40k I found the most fun, which is making horrible gamey charges in the assault phase. Hello and welcome back to All Specs Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel, where we're all about using our models to the best of their abilities on the tabletop. Today we're back for a quick tip video to discuss wrapping, trapping, pinning and tri-pointing enemy units where we'll be aiming to stop the enemy units from falling back from our unit because at least one model is totally surrounded, if not more. Being able to do this well is genuinely one of the ways that gives more experienced 8th edition generals a big advantage over people who do not know how to do this. And I can think of multiple games where being able to trap a unit in close combat or not doing so has changed the outcome of the game, turning a win into a loss or vice versa. It genuinely can be that important. So without further ado, let's get into it. So, wrapping, trapping, pinning, tri-pointing, surrounding enemy models, there's quite a lot of names for this. We've already said that the intention is to keep at least one enemy model, or the entire unit, surrounded by our own models at the end of the assault phase, meaning that when it gets to the opponent's next turn, they won't just be able to fall back out of combat, and then perhaps shoot your exposed unit with a lot of guns. Tri-pointing itself is named because if you have three circular bases placed at equal intervals around a central circular base, if they're all in base contact, then it means that that central circular base will not be able to move without one of the other circular bases outside it blocking the path. This is tri-pointing, which means if you end the phase with three of your models around any single member of an enemy squad, as we can see in the picture on the bottom right, then that entire squad will not be able to fall back as that model is always going to wind up finishing its move within 1 inches of your models. So what is the main benefit of tri-pointing? There can actually be a few advantages. First of all, as we said, say if you have a very killy, fragile assault unit, something like Blood Angel's Death Company would be a perfect example. They are incredibly dangerous in the combat phase, but they're quite low in durability, so if they charge in, kill their target, and then are sitting in the middle of the enemy's lines, the enemy army is going to shoot them to death without much effort. So say if the Death Company squad doesn't kill their entire unit, but instead try points one of the models, then it will save them from being able to be shot by the enemy next turn. They'll probably finish off the units that they half killed in the opponent's turn, and then you'll have a very nasty squad of fighting melee infantry in the middle of the enemy's army, hopefully at full strength. So by just wrapping one model, you have saved your very expensive elite fighting infantry unit from an untimely end at the enemy's guns, and instead of it getting wiped out, it will actually be able to charge forward and wipe out another enemy unit, or at least that's the idea. On the other hand, say if you're using a unit that hasn't got very good abilities, say you're using a squad of Orc Gretchen, for example, and they charge in and try point one of the models from a Space Marine Devastator Centurion squad. That means those models will not be able to fall back, and will have to remain in combat with the Gretchen, when they'd much rather be falling back to prepare to use their guns in future turns. If you charged a squad of 30 Gretchen into these guys, you could have potentially turns and turns where they have to just repeatedly fight in close combat using all of their fancy guns, and you could have essentially removed that unit from consideration from the game unless something comes to rescue them. Those are probably the most common benefits. We'll mention a few others later. So how is best to go about wrapping and trapping a unit? Say you've got a fighty close combat squad that wants to wrap and trap an enemy shooting unit rather than kill it. There are two main ways to achieve this. Either you can go for the try point on one model, or you could potentially surround the whole unit or multiple models if you have a unit that's large enough to do so. If, for example, in our Orc Gretchen example, 30 bodies is easy enough to build a big wall all the way around the unit, so they don't really have to go for try pointing any one model. They can literally just wrap up the entire unit in a sea of bodies. If you're going for try pointing, however, then you have to be a little bit more careful. You want to identify an isolated enemy model on the outskirts of the unit so that you're going to be able to get your model's bases all around it. At the end of the charge move, one of your models will have to be within one inches of the enemy model, so at least one of your fighting models will have to attack the enemy unit. It's often worth keeping back the rest of the squad out of range of attacking, so say just outside of one inch of both the enemy and your own model, so they won't be able to attack and therefore not do too much damage to the unit you're charging so hopefully the enemy doesn't have the option of just removing that model that you're about to try and try point. Even if you do kill a model or two, it's not guaranteed that the opponent will see the try point coming, and they may want to remove a different model from the squad, still allowing this to go ahead. After your models have fought, 
you get a 3 inch consolidate move which has to be done towards the closest enemy model. So if we can see from the pictures on the right, on the top right hand corner, we've got one space marine that's in close combat with the chaos space marine, the others are outside of 1 inches of him. They fight, they don't kill that Chaos Space Marine, and then they use their 3 inch consolidate move for the other two Space Marines to go around the side of the Chaos Space Marine and into base contact, successfully tripointing that model. Obviously the Chaos Space Marine will be able to fight back, so it will be helpful to have enough models in the squad so you can remove a non-essential one that isn't going to free him from the tripoint lock. In this example however we only seem to have a squad of 3, so any casualty caused by him would release the unit so he could fall back. Isolated special characters are a really good choice for tri-pointing, because they're generally tough enough to take a couple of punches and not go down immediately, and they're often strung out or on their own, so there's enough space to get your model's bases round to do the tri-point. If you're attacking a unit, then the best way is to avoid having the enemy just remove the model that you're about to try and tri-point, and to do whatever you can to stop your unit inflicting attacks on the enemy unit. Firstly, one slightly sneaky tactic is that, as per the big rulebook FAQ, all models count as having a close combat weapon in addition to all of their regular war gear. This means that, say, if you've got a power fist armed space marine unit that's likely to make a big mess of anything they charge, even if only one model has to fight, he could still wipe out a few enemy models because he has such great war gear. If you elect to fight with the close combat weapon instead, you'll reduce the amount of damage and hopefully not kill anyone, allowing you to easily tri-point the unit. Perhaps an even more reliable way is if you declare a unit as the target of your charge and also don't declare the unit that you're intending to tri-point. If you've got a sufficiently large squad, say a 15-man death company squad, they could declare their charge target as a squad of fire warriors and deliberately not declare the ethereal that's standing right next to them. The death company can charge in, end within one inch of the fire warrior squad, and the only stipulation is that they can't finish within one inch of the ethereal for the charge move. Piling and consolidation are different. You pile in and consolidate towards the nearest model regardless of whether or not you charged it. So with either the piling or consolidate move, you could try point the ethereal with three of the squad's models, and the rest of them can happily kill that fire warrior squad. This way you've both killed a unit and also try pointed them, keeping the death company safe from all of that scary tower firepower the next turn. There's no chance of killing the ethereal, because charging units can only actually declare their attacks against units that they allocated as a target of their charge. As you didn't declare the ethereal, you actually can't allocate any attacks to him, even if you're in base-to-base -base contact. Of course, the ethereal can fight back, but he's unlikely to clear out much of a death company squad on his own. Let's talk about a few slightly more advanced applications now. A very clever move that you can potentially do is pinning a unit for another unit I've had this done on me on an interesting game once, where I had a squad of intercessors out in the front of my army. My opponent charged them with a squad of scouts, and enough of them survived to try point one of the intercessors. He also had a squad of terminators nearby that had charged into a Invicta tactical warsuit. The terminators killed the warsuit, and with their consolidate move, they moved three inches towards the intercessors, putting them within one inch of them. When it came to my turn, I couldn't fall the intercessors back out of close combat because the scouts were around them, and because they were also within base contact of the Terminators, it meant that I couldn't shoot the Terminators with any of my firepower, meaning that my opponent had very cleverly just saved his Terminators from a brutal round of firepower. And of course, at the end of my turn, in the assault phase, the Terminators were absolutely free to go to town on those intercessors and cut them up into little pieces with their chain fists. You could also do clever things with shooting units for this. Say your opponent has a Space Marine Scout squad, out in the front of the deployment zone. Say if you charge them and wrap and trap them with a unit, you could also charge them with, say, some flying firepower, such as, say, a hammerhead tank for Tau, a repulsor for Space Marines, or one of the Eldar Grav tanks. Because that unit of Space Marine scouts can't fall back, it means it will have to stay in close combat with the flying firepower unit, and this means that your opponent couldn't actually shoot at the repulsor or hammerhead tank at all, because it's in close combat with those scouts. And then in your turn, because it has fly, you can happily float it back and unload all of its guns again. So that's a potential way to get free immunity from shooting for a turn. Wrapping and trapping units on objectives can certainly be a powerful ploy. I've had success with this when a bunch of guardsmen charged a unit of Eldar Rangers and completely surrounded them. The combat took a lot of turns before the guardsmen eventually beat down the last of the Rangers, by which time they'd been on an objective for basically most of the game and had been racking up points every single turn. 
because of the way that the rest of the battle was going, my opponent didn't have any close combat units to catch up with those guardsmen, meaning that that objective was essentially mine for most of the game. You can use wrapping and trapping to gain movement if you are slow moving assault army, basically as it means that your unit will pretty much guarantee to be able to fight another fight phase in your opponent's turn, because your opponent couldn't fall back, then you could potentially use that to gain the extra pile in and consolidate move, and potentially up to 6 inches of extra movement. There are some units in the game that can activate multiple times, things like Corn Berserkers do this for free. They basically fight and then can fight again later in the turn, and each time they fight they get to pile in and consolidate 3 inches again. It's very common for stratagems to be able to do this as well, such as the Space Marines honour the chapter stratagem, to let basically any Space Marine unit fight again for 3 command points. Having all this extra movement means that it's a really useful tool for ensuring wrapping and trapping happens. Say if you have some death company that have just obliterated whichever unit they charged into, and there's another enemy character nearby, even if they didn't declare a charge on him, you could use Honor the Chapter to fight again, and literally just use that 3 inch pile in and 3 inch consolidate to ensure that you try point that character, and buy yourself the immunity from shooting till next turn. By stopping one of your fighty close combat units getting shot next turn, you could certainly justify the command point expenditure. In some games, never mind the poor unfortunate character who is almost certainly going to die in your opponent's turn while he is surrounded by angry black armoured space marines. Another use for that bonus pile in move can be to pile into another enemy unit and avoid overwatch. You obviously won't get the advantage of having charged in. But say if you've wrapped and trapped a fire warrior squad, you kill it in your opponent's turn and you pile into a broadside battle suit nearby. You've saved yourself having to be shot by a million Tau Overwatch shots, which could be very nice. Finally, I'll just mention the static units or low movement units. Things like Space Marine Drop Pods, you almost have the advantage of auto-wrapping and trapping the drop pod every time you charge it, as obviously it can't move to fall back. This is particularly powerful with the hover tanks type tactic I said before and one of the reasons that drop pods can potentially be a liability. Say you had a big gun line with three repulsor executioners, and your opponent drops a drop pod down, and the squad inside kills a repulsor executioner. For as you deal with whatever the scary threat in the drop pod was, your remaining two repulsor executioners can unload all of their firepower and then charge the drop pod, keeping them safe from enemy firepower from the next turn, and potentially causing a big headache for your opponent. So how do you avoid your units being wrapped and trapped? Honestly, in some cases, it's not going to be possible. Particularly things like lone characters on foot are going to be hard to do this, particularly if they need to be in certain positions to buff units or take the fight to the enemy. There are definite counterplays, though. First, and most obviously, is removing the right models when your opponent kills them in close combat and spotting a potential wrap and trap coming and pulling the exposed models. Most things with fly are going to be very easy to escape from wraps, as they can just fall back straight over the enemy units that were trapping them. And also there's sometimes teleporting abilities that can achieve the same effect. Things like dad jump from orcs or similar abilities. If you've only got a few enemy models that are trapping you in close combat, things like smites could genuinely be used to clear them off so your unit could shoot in full effect at the shooting phase because they won't have fallen back if you've just used psychic spells to clear the enemy units. So say you had a unit of dark reapers that had been surrounded by three guardsmen who'd done a gamey charge. If you had a few farseers nearby, you could smite all the guardsmen to death, and then the Dark Reapers could just happily shoot at whatever they wanted, as they haven't done a fallback move, so can still shoot. Using morale to your advantage can also be helpful. If your unit's taken some casualties, and they take some more from the morale check, you will now have seen all the movement that your opponent will have done, and which models are tri-pointed, so you can use the morale phase to say, yep, that guy flees, on that guy flees, and suddenly none of the models in your squad are locked up anymore. Terrain can be a good impediment to wrapping and trapping. Say if you put a lot of your infantry models by a ruined wall, it's going to be hard for your opponents to put models all around any one of your models. Infantry can move freely through walls, so you could retreat to the other side potentially and get out of harm's way. Also, if you have multi-level ruins available, then you might be able to just move directly upwards on the multi-level ruin and get out of the trap through the ceiling. That would be thinking outside the box. You can also deploy your miniatures in a clever formation that makes it incredibly hard for opponents to wrap and trap models. Maybe only leave gaps between your miniatures that are slightly smaller than one of your opponent's bases so they can't get fully around them. Or deploy in a big central circular cluster, meaning that there's no individual model on the outskirts to be surrounded and tri-pointed. 
Finally, one of the best ways to make wrapping and trapping not as big a deal is to have a decent counter assault element nearby to support any units that might get wrapped and trapped. Sure, your fighty close combat unit has wrapped and trapped my gunline unit, but if I can counter charge with a really strong close combat unit of my own, I'll get to strike first, and hopefully your fighty close combat unit won't live to activate in my turn. Not having access to this is a really big reason that Tau are so vulnerable to being wrapped and trapped. Shooting is pretty much their main way of dealing damage, and if you deny that to them, then the Tau player is in for a bad time. So I hope some of that has been useful to you. One thing to bear in mind is that gamey char shenanigans like this aren't necessarily always the most fun to play against. I wouldn't inflict these sort of clever tricks on newer players, unless they specifically just want to learn every aspect of the game and get better competitively. But on the whole, I would save this for tournament games, or games where both you and your opponent fully know and understand the mechanics and potential game-changing consequences of wrapping and trapping, so nobody is caught by surprise. Let me know your thoughts or any particularly cool manoeuvres that you've managed to pull off down in the comments below. I personally really enjoy this area of the game, as I feel like it's one of the most rewarding with positioning and fully thinking through the consequences of your various moves and where your models will wind up after charging and the melee of combat. Feel free to subscribe to Auspets Tactics if you'd like to hear more videos that think about the tactics and strategies behind 40k, and to support me on Patreon if you are finding my content helpful. Thanks very much for listening, I'll hope to see you guys next time.